Everybody, excuse me, I'm sorry. Everybody pray for Sister Marla, uh, the uh, evangelist, the singer uh, that's coming for the meeting. Uh, she's on the road and um, with her motor home. And you know, her husband had that stroke a couple of weeks ago. And uh, the motor home has broken down. And um, she's trying to decide whether she should, um, she has AAA and they will tow her a uh, hundred miles for that service, um, free of course. Um, and she's trying to decide whether to come on toward the meeting or have them tow her back uh, the other way. And uh, so let's pray that God will um, be with her. But I instructed Sister Marla to call her and tell her as soon as I get out of this Bible study, I'll be talking with her, but I feel, uh, I said, tow her to a garage, uh, tow, tow the motor home to a garage, get her off the highway, and um, and then uh, get a motel where she could stay in it if she can't stay in the motor home. It may probably be morning, this late in the evening, I, I would think, before she may get into a garage in the morning, tow her where she could get to a garage and um, get off the road. I'll talk with her and we'll pray, and uh, I believe God can uh, then show us the rest of it what He wants to do. But I'm at this. I'm still believing that uh, she's going to come to the meeting, and I, I. So if we can get her to a garage and uh, there are mechanics, and it's not uh, such a uh, major problem that they can't repair it get her on the road and get her here yet for the meeting and I believe we'll have victory. Uh, so we're going to pursue that but I think we need to pray. Everybody with your pastor right now. Father, uh, we want the will of God done and we want you to overshadow Sister Marla, Lord. And we want, we want her to be protected. And we don't want any harm to come to her on the highway. And we want her and her husband and child to be watched over and and we plead the blood of Jesus. We, we don't know uh, the will of God uh, right now, this moment, but you can show us your perfect will and uh, you, can, you can be with Sister Marla. You can protect her and you can give victory. The enemy, uh, the enemy wants to fight this meeting. It's evident that the enemy does not like this meeting taking place. But in the name of Jesus, we claim victory, and we claim power, and we rise above every obstacle. We will rise above every obstacle. We will rise above every obstacle. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we rebuke the powers of darkness. In Jesus' name, we claim the victory and we hold to the unchanging hand of the mighty God we serve. In Jesus' name, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Lord, thank you. Thank you. Praise your name. Give you the praise. All things, everything, we give you the praise. All things, all things, we work together. Praise God. All right, we'll leave it in the hands of the Lord, and we put it there, and we'll believe. So, let's go back to Revelations uh, 6 and move quickly into this. And so it wouldn't be a natural mountain. It wouldn't be a natural rock. But these are uh, places men hide, and men hide in organizational structure. That's where men hide. So that's, that's the hiding place of men. They do it in corporate uh, structure. They do it in business structure. They do it in religious structure. Uh, and so that's where men hide. Sometimes where their sins. They take their sins and hide under these mountains and rocks and cover themselves. And, but here, the scripture said they're hiding from the face or the revelation of God that sits on the throne is all power and from the wrath of God. 
Now, verse 17 links us directly with verse 1 of Revelation 8. For the great day of his wrath is come. And the great day of his wrath was not the earthquake because that took place. The earthquake took place. So that was not the great day of his wrath. But he said the great day of his wrath is come. Um, and who shall be able to stand? The great day of his wrath is the battle of Armageddon itself. Uh, taking place the set time of God to display his wrath upon the nations and the world that's his set time in the day of his wrath is a great day there was a great earthquake in the time period of the sixth seal opening but now here's a great day of his wrath and this is the judgment of God that is to come upon this world uh, in the culmination of the seven vows, the seven uh, trumpets sounding, the seven vows. Now let's go to Revelation 8. Now, as I cross into Revelation 8, we'll take our time, because we'll get into this next Monday night as well. We'll finish it in tonight. And when he had opened the seventh seal, now remember in verse 12, he opened the sixth seal. Now this is the last seal. And when he'd opened the seventh seal, there was silence. There was silence. Not on the earth, but in heaven. There was silence in heaven. And when silence is there, there's no sound. There's nothing being done. There's no transition or, business, transition or transaction of business. About the space of half an hour, about the space of half now, and to you that understand and want to understand, and we all try to do that, prophetic time, how do we arrive at seven and a half years as I had about half an hour? Because the church world, read any of the, read any, read any of the doctrinal statements of Southern Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, um, the Adventist, uh, Church of God, Assembly of God, um, they, any com read uh, Jameson Fawcett Brown commentary, read Strong's, they all give the half hour as three and a half years. How do we arrive at seven and a half, prophetically speaking? Because we know that in the scriptures, a day is accounted as a year. Sixth chapter of Genesis. Yeah. Uh, I don't have a verse, the number of his days shall be 120 years. I spoke to Noah and gave him that time equation. Um, that a day is as a year. Also, also a thousand years is as a day with the Lord. Also, 40 years is as a day, the day of provocation. Hard not your heart says they did on the day of provocation of the Hebrews. That was a 40-year day. That was Israel. That was a 40-year day. There's a 1,000-year day. There's a 120-year day, and a day is as a year. All right? Using the Jewish calendar of time, which God does, uh, the Gregorian calendar, God did not give that to man. That's the interpretation of the priesthood of, of Rome in the setting of the centuries of the church, but the Jewish calendar <coughs> was times and seasons given by the Lord Israel. They equate 360 days to a year, not the 365 days that we use. Um, looking at uh, one hour as being one 24th part of a 24 hour day, and night, which is a day. We could, we, we uh, a day and a night makes up a day past, does it not? Yes. When we have a day and a night, a day is past. That's 12 hours. Jesus said, are there not 12 hours in a day? But he didn't say the night. But we use a day and a night as being the complete 
day. <clears throat> one hour is one twenty-fourth part, mm -hmm. prophetically, fractionally, and wise in prophecy of uh, that day. A day being a year. Divide then, put the day into the year, which he did in Genesis 6. And when you divide that one twenty-fourth into three hundred and sixty, the year, you have then the mystery revealed or the hidden secret revealed of the hour. That's 15, mathematically, prophetically, that's 15. Taking a half hour is seven and a half years or that period of time, hour or years um, mm -hmm. going back and forth in time with God prophetically. Remember, you're dealing in prophecy, and um, it's 15. Therefore, we then separate in the body of Christ by revelation, and it's contested, but then all, all truth is contested. Someone said, does everybody agree with that, Brother Marlow? No, they don't. No, they don't. And you won't either unless God gives it to you. The only way you ever agree with truth is when God reveals it to you. Uh, you, you. You will debate any issue until God reveals to you or to me or to us the truth. That's why the, a, a multitude of counselors are safety because you have to take what God gives this vessel and what God gives this vessel. And I, I was fortunate to sit in the assembly of men that sought truth for years and years and years of my boyhood, my youthful years, my coming up years, I sat in hours and hours and hours of the scriptures <laughs> of being going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth in meetings from here to there to there. And, and I heard uh, scriptures reason and then I sought the truth. And I had a chance to weigh every way of looking at the scripture and when truth is revealed to you now if you felt that what i said was not true that doesn't mean that i'm necessarily right and you're wrong or you're um, uh, you're right and i'm wrong but revelation settles truth amen get what i said revelation settles truth once it's discussed, once you look at it, and I look at it, and we look at it, then the Holy Spirit has to settle yes. by revelation. Yes. What is, and this, this was the premise that Brother William Souders uh, built upon. His whole ministry was, he would say, consider what I say, yes. and the Lord give you understanding. And I never saw him bulldoze anybody. I never saw him run over anybody. Uh, but he said, consider what I say, and the Lord give you understanding. So right now, having said this, we go into Revelations 8 and um, the half hour of silence. I'm saying in my understanding, it is seven and a half years. If God has revealed to you it's three and a half, the half hour, as most of the common teaching is, then I'm not going to say that I'm right and you're wrong. I'm going to say you consider what I'm saying and the Lord give you understanding because that's the way truth is arrived at. So here now we have the half hour of silence. That is, and then what does that mean? It means that, now this is not the firmament above us called heaven. No, we're looking up into the heaven. You're not looking into heaven. You're looking up into the sky. You're looking up into the front. That's not heaven. But the heaven that he speaks of in Revelation 8 is the heaven of heavens, our third heaven. Third heaven itself. That's the, the, the heaven of heaven. Heaven. This is a place, not a condition. The baptism of the Holy Ghost is a heavenly condition. Um, uh, it, it is uh, third heaven is a place and the, here in this place there was silence in heaven 
about the space of half an hour. It meant that God was not dispensing anything that comes from heaven. What comes from heaven? Uh, it, judgment comes from heaven. Mercy comes from heaven. Revelation comes from heaven. Blessings come from heaven. The Holy Ghost it comes from heaven. The Word of God comes from heaven. But nothing is coming. It's silent. There's nothing on the agenda. It's silent. There's nothing being spoken, said, accomplished, or done. He that is holy, right at this time, will be holy still. He that is unjust will be unjust still.